Hello lovely people, and welcome to another episode of Book Chat, the regular but not monthly roundup of what I've been reading recently. Oh, I'm so glad I managed to say that in one go without fucking up. Sophie Vlogs! So, I have read some things, I'm going to talk about some things, and I'm just going to dive into it. First up, we've got Brothers Ruin by Emma Newman. I really like Emma Newman. Um, her Split World books are all set in Bath, which is near where I live, and they're just generally fantastic and wonderful and lovely. So, this was lent to me, very excited to read it. This is about, the year is 1850 and Great Britain is flourishing thanks to the Royal Society of the Esoteric Arts. Essentially, you've got people who can do magic. If you don't hand them over to the state, then you get in trouble. Um, the, our main character is a woman who can do magic. She doesn't want that life. She wants to marry the man she loves and do the things she wants to do. Um, her brother is mistakenly thinks that something she has magically done was the result of him and then submits himself to this test. So she's got to, does she help him get through the test? How is that going to work? Etc, etc. Whilst also avoiding being detected herself. There's also this whole subplot to do with um, nasty people doing nasty things. That's the basic plot setup. <laughs> Very poorly done, but that's it. Um, suffice to say, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, suffice to say, the Emma Newman has a really delightful writing style. I find her quite fun. Um, she's always able to inject a little bit of humour into the story she's telling, that sort of thing. Um, this very much didn't... We didn't get massively places plot-wise, but I feel like we've really established a world, and now the second book in the series is really going to take us to the meat of what this series is going to focus on. So um, I say this was an interesting introduction to this whole world and topic and I'm definitely really interested to see where it goes next and I will definitely be reading the next book. And after that is a short story and that is The Further Station by Ben Aronovich. Um, this is part of the Peter Grant series which focuses on a supernaturally detective in London. A um, lot of fun. <laughs> All of these books I'm just like yeah this is a lot of fun. Um, but this genuinely was. This is about um, a haunting on a tube line and so Peter and his team are trying to fi figure out what message this ghost is trying to t well, what message these ghosts are trying to tell um, and get to the bottom of another mystery essentially. It's a nice little snippet set in the world that I know and love. This was interesting because Peter's niece was a bit more involved in this which is sort of an interesting plot line that I'm in looking forward to seeing where that goes in the future. Um, and, I mean, I love all these books. They're always a lot of fun. They've got an interesting mystery element to them. This, I think, is a short story rather than being a fully fleshed out novel because it doesn't massively tie into our big main bad plot line that's going on in the book series. So it was nice to just read a little drabble that wasn't quite so emotionally traumatising. So it's currently December 2017, just for reference. Um, so I recently, in my time, went on holiday to Edinburgh around the same time that the rest of the UK got covered in snow. We didn't have any snow in Edinburgh, we just had a lot of frost, but um, suffice to say it was very, very cold. So I, on that holiday, was reading about sunny, sunny Greece, which was slightly jarring. But this was a really fun, easy read. I sort of wanted something very light because it, most of my reading was done in the airport because my plane was delayed because it was snowing. <laughs> This is about a woman called Ellie, who has been receiving these postcards from someone whose only initial they give is A, um, about this man's travelling around Greece. And these postcards are obviously not intended for Ellie, they're intended for this woman who he loved, who something went wrong, blah 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 blah. So as he, so she's been, Ellie has been receiving all these postcards and discovering a little bit about um, this man's and Greece itself, and so she is inspired to go to Greece herself, but just as she is leaving to go to the airport, there is a, um, a diary this time instead of a postcard, so she takes it with her. So you have a, a two-thread narrative where you've got one thread which is her reading the diary of this man and his travels around Greece while he's trying to heal his heartache and all the places he's going, that sort of thing. And then the other thread is Ellie's own journey because she's unhappy in her life and she, as she reads his writing, sort of making her reflect on her own life. Um, so this was a lovely piece of frippery, essentially. Um, this had 
it goes around lots of different areas of Greece, which is really interesting because I've never been to Greece. Um, I would like to go to Greece, just never done that. And there's a, a kind of interesting little intermingling of contemporary Greek politics, so looking at the way a lot of people, in, young people in Greece were disillusioned and hopeless and that sort of thing, about like the economic crisis and stuff. And then sort of um, some stories which tie in with Greek mythology a little bit, like there's an Icarus type story, that sort of thing. So um, that was like an interesting little intermingling of the contemporary and the mythological and that sort of thing. But essentially, if you'd like a bit of light holiday reading, it was good for that purpose. The next book is a play, which I also read while I was on holiday, and that is Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, which my friend gave me for my birthday because um, our podcast we really like called Alphabet Soup has done a couple of episodes on it. I have read this, but I haven't yet listened to those episodes, although I will be. So I'm sure there is a lot to this that I didn't pick up on because they've got like a four episodes on it. So that'll be interesting. Um, this was really cool because I went into it with no idea of what to expect. Um, so it's, you've got like 1890 storyline. So we're in like Regency era type thing just before the Regency really, but like Regency era essentially. And then there's like a, uh, like a contemporary modern plotline and they're both set in the same house. And the Regency era plotline sort of has, um, there is this man who is being a tutor to this girl and she's doing a whole load of math stuff. He is friends with Lord Byron, so Lord Byron is like, never really appears but is like a loose topic. Whilst he, and this man is getting embroiled in some other stuff. So you've got that whole sort of moment. And then in contemporary times, you have a couple of different like scholars, if you will, who are also staying at this big fancy house this time. One of them is really interested in the hermit of this place, um, which is not something that, oh God, this is getting so convoluted. And the other guy is a Byron scholar. Um, you can see, essentially, there's a whole load of stuff which happened back in the 1890 times which the people in the contemporary times are sort of loosely working their way towards discovering because it's to do with these topics they're interested in. So as they're doing that, you're sort of seeing what's happening back in this time, seeing where these people are going wrong, where they're going right, and then together you discover the actual final fates of all the people in the 1890s. That's as concise as I can be without going into like, and then this person did this, etc. Suffice to say, I really enjoyed it actually. I don't read a lot of plays, hugely, but this is quite a short play, so um, there was a lot of humour to it, there was a lot of like, you know, like that acerbic biting humour and you insult someone but then you end up with sir and that sort of thing. There was a lot of like that kind of thing going on. There was um, enough of like a little mystery element that I was like really wanted to know what happened. Um, and suffice to say, I would be really interested to see how this is um, actually portrayed on stage because it all takes place in the same set. None of the sets are changed, that sort of thing. Um, so <laughs> this might be a bit of a ramble. I'm not very good at reviewing plays, I think. Suffice to say, it was very intriguing. Um, if you're interested in sort of mystery, almost not really sci-fi, there's like these big discussions about the universe and maths and stuff. I am doing this so poorly. I'll stop there. It was interesting, is the gist of what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to listen to the Alzheimer's Soup podcast and then hopefully after that I'll be able to talk about it a bit better. And finally we have Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. I really like the film of this. Um, I wanted to read the book of it because I was told that there is a relationship between the two main female characters, but that in this, which in the film, I absolutely ship, and then in this, it is actually a thing. Um, this was perfectly fun. There were a couple of moments. Essentially, the film is like one of those films which sometimes is on TV, and I watch it, and I'm like, oh, I really like this film. I forgot how much I like this film. And I think some of the actors in it are very good choices, especially for the main person who plays Iggy great choice. So this was really interesting to read because I really like reading books and um, having watched the films and then sort of looking at what was adapted and what wasn't adapted, that sort of thing. There were a couple of moments in this which were a bit like, oh our characters are expressing some mildly racist things right now. Um, but I don't know whether it's like, you know, product of its time or if like the, pe the characters themselves are, I don't know, this is a ramble. 
Um, suffice to say, it was interesting. I think I might... If I could smush the bits I liked from the film with the bits I liked from the book and make, like, a new thing that still has the same actors that were in the film, then that would be really great. That's my ideal. Combine them together, keep the actors. Super. Um, but anyway, that's everything I have to talk about this week. My camera is very dying right now, so I will bid you goodbye, and I will see you next week for something different.